democracy in order to save it from. Well, they didn't really have an election at all this time. We don't know how Kamala Harris actually, who, who right. she never got a vote. President Trump went to an election and got a vote. That would have been a party that sued me across the country to make sure that I could not participate in this election. As soon as I endorsed President Trump, they, they began suing me to keep me off the ballot. And in this state, we won that case. I was on the ballot. We won the case in front of the Court of Appeals, and they said, I get to take my name off the ballot, which was what I was trying to do. And they still kept your name on the ballot. And then it went to the Supreme Court of Michigan, and the Democratic bench decided they were going to keep me on the ballot. Mm -hmm. They injured Donald Trump. But what I'm saying to you and to everybody in Michigan is when you go into that voting booth, you're going to see my name there. And I'm telling you, do not vote for me. Yeah. Yeah. is the candidate that is here to reclaim this country. Uh, what is some advice to the voters beyond don't vote for him? Uh, and, to tell, and to tell everybody else, by the way, it's important. It's important because there are states that we do want to vote for you for. There are other states outside of Michigan that it would be great for people to vote you for. for I'm telling people all across the country to vote for Donald Trump. Oh, okay. Yes! I'd say correct. I'd say correct. So, but other than that, what other advice would you like to give these wonderful people here and everyone else watching at home? What is some advice? Oh, a red ticket! <laughs> well, that's helpful. Yeah, that is helpful. Trump is telling the truth. That's exactly right. That is exactly right. Which is a stark contrast to Kamala Harris, who lies about every issue that she is asked about. And, and that really speaks to, to where I see opportunity. Help your friends and family and co-workers who may not have yet made up their minds, whether they're Michigan voters or voters in other states. Obviously, you know how important this state is in this election. And you know how much the Democrats will likely try to mess with this election and how important it is that every one of our voices are heard. So I wanna ask you to do two things. One is find those people in your lives that you can influence, that you can speak the truth to, that you can share what's on your heart, why you've made this choice to support President Trump so that he can come and fix what Kamala Harris and Joe Biden have broken. Listen to the concerns that they have. They, they may not like the way President Trump talks about certain issues, or they may have personality issues, but I encourage you to, to bring the conversation back the to us, the people. For the first time in our lifetimes, we have this unique opportunity as voters not to just wonder, well, can I believe what they are saying or not? We actually have President Trump with four years and a record of success in the White House on every issue, domestic and foreign policy. And you have Kamala Harris, who has four years almost in the White House and a very clear record. I did an interview with one of your local TV stations uh, yesterday or the day before. CNN? No, one of your local Thank stations you. here in Detroit. And, and uh, the, the anchor actually asked me a, a question that you may be asked, which is like, hey, he said, when President Trump was president, you had Vice President Pence, who didn't have the keys to the car. Vice President Pence wasn't the one making decisions, it was President Trump, which was true. And his question was, how can you say that Kamala Harris has a record of four years when she was just the Vice President? Why is it different? He's incompetent. Well, no, listen, we can look to what Kamala Harris herself and Joe Biden himself has said. He was on the show, The View, just a few days ago, 
And he said he had so much trust and confidence in Kamala Harris that he delegated every issue on domestic and foreign policy to Kamala Harris. Whoa. Proof point number one. Proof point number two. Whoa. Kamala Harris has said that she was the last person in the room advising Joe Biden on every single major decision that was made. Kamala Harris said Sex. This. She said it. Proof point number three. As vice president, she cast the most tie-breaking votes in the U.S. Senate in history to enact Joe Biden and Kamala Harris's policies that have caused so much harm and destruction to our lives, to our country, and to our prospects for peace and prosperity. So you can encourage your friends, don't listen necessarily to what I say or to what Bobby says. Look at the facts, look at the truth, and fundamentally answer that core question. Are you, are your children, is your family better off today than they were four years ago? No. The answer to any objective person is clearly no. Have those conversations with those who you are connected with, who you care about, so that when you go to the to the uh, polling place on election day, or when you send in your absentee ballot, or when you go in for early voting, and I encourage you to get your vote in early because who knows what's gonna happen on election day. You see a lot of people on the East Coast right now who are struggling because of this massive storm that just came through. What if the weather's bad on election day? What if roads are closed? We cannot place the future of our country on the weather on November 5th. We True. will go I'm early. Serious. True. I'm serious. Our voices must be heard in this election. So when you go to cast your vote, I want to encourage you to make a list of at least 10 people in your lives that you will be accountable for to make sure that they also go out and cast their votes and ask them to do the same. Amen. I was brilliant, and I would say the same thing. I mean, I, you know, the, uh, I would add one other piece of evidence, which was that President or Vice President Harris's principal job was to manage the border. Yeah. Yeah. Just that. I, I, I that's, a, that's a clear. President, <laughs> okay. Vice President Harris was the one who kept coming out and telling us. President Biden is fine cognitively. Yeah, lied to us. He gaslighted us for three years. And we need somebody who's going to tell us the truth. Oh, I was at the border at the beginning of, you know, 18 months ago when I first started running. And I went to Yuma, the border of Yuma. I've been there many times, but I went to the border in Yuma and saw the big gap in the fence. There's 27 gaps. Why are those gaps in the wall? Those gaps are at the wall because, and there's construction material sitting behind them that we purchased years and years ago. And they're just sitting there rusting and rotting. Why? Because the day that President Biden got to office, I, I, he already had appointed her to run the border. He called an end to construction on the wall and left these 27 gaps. And I went to just one of them. And it was like being at the start of the Boston Marathon. There were people coming across, being brought in by the Sinaloa drug cartel, the United White buses, 55 people per bus from all over the world, coming across our border. And the Biden administration has told the U.S. Border Patrol to end the catch and return policy and implement a catch and release policy. And they changed a lot of other, uh, other policies. But the big thing is, in those areas where people are coming across, they need to finish the wall. President, President, our Vice President Harris keeps blaming Congress. Every time she says that, it irritates me because I've spoken to the Border Patrol, and they've said she can shut this down overnight. Wow. She can do it herself. She doesn't need Congress the same way that President Trump did it without Congress. Executive order. So, you know, we, she doesn't even need an executive order. She can just do policy changes and finish the wall. That's even better. And uh, <laughs> I mean, I see a level of incompetency 
that is really unprecedented in a serious political candidate in our history. And, uh, and a level of incompetency that is so high that she cannot defend her policy. And she cannot go on and do an unscripted interview with a hostile interviewer or even just an inquisitive one and survive. Or she's hiding. President Trump does three or four interviews a day. I've done since the beginning of this campaign the same four, five, six, seven interviews a day with hostile interviewers. We want a president who can defend their policies, who can outline an idealistic vision for this country, who can tell us what the future is going to look like and how, how they're going to get us there and encourage us and inspire us with that. You want a vice president, a president who can go toe to toe with foreign leaders to advance America's interests around the globe and our vision for the globe. Uh, we're about to consider somebody seriously for President of the United States who cannot give an interview. And to me, it's shocking. I think my father would be dismayed. My uncle would be dismayed because they love debate. They love conversation. They love the dialogue. And they knew that the best hope for America is in policies that were able to win, be a needle in the furnace of debate, and then float to the top in the marketplace of ideas. And we have a vice president who does not seem to have anything in her head except <laughs> what the deep state tells her to say and to point <laughs> Who saw Kamala Harris go to the border? Me! 38 days before the election. She's been vice president for almost four years. Terrible. Her first task was to go and try to secure the border. She's scared of Donald Trump. 38 days before the election, she goes to the border. <laughs> You guys, you guys know it's all late. the now. It's too yeah. late now. He said to her, go Here wake him up. The issue. And, and she was called out by some of the law enforcement officers down there who told her directly, you're coming down here 38 days. So not only did they leave our borders open, aiding and abetting the cartels who have profited and continue to profit from their open border policies, they punished the governors who moved shipping containers and used barbed wire to try to close those gaps in the fence that Joe Biden uh, refused to finish, and even took them to court for it. The shameless nature of Kamala Harris's actions is immeasurable. And she is shameless in going there 38 days before the election, trying to pretend as though she cares. She held a whole press conference as she read from the teleprompter. We got, she, she said, we got to put some rules in place at the border. <laughs> That's what she said. <laughs> and we got to enforce those rules, she wow. said. Wow. It's a disaster. Her shamelessness comes <laughs> got a from a place of having no conscience. Yeah. Mm. Because if she had a conscience, she would care. That's she would care about how this is impacting the American people. She would care about how Commander-in-Chief's first and foremost responsibility is to secure our country. Public safety! To ensure our safety, security, and our freedom. Kamala Harris will be dangerous as president, president and Commander-in-Chief because she has no conscience, which means she will be used as a puppet for the dangerous powers that the have destroyed puppet. our country for too long. The Democrat puppet! Two thoughts in that one is, <laughs> we love it. My father was very, very close, one of the closest political allies with Cesar Chavez. And I worked with Cesar very, very care, uh, very closely in 1980 during the presidential campaign. And then my father won the campaign in California in 68 because of Cesar Chavez. Cesar Chavez was the first person that my father informed that he was running for president before he even told his own age. During the last 10 years of his life, 
I work very closely with Cesar Chavez on pesticide issues. Pesticides, we have poison 15,000 to 20,000 wow. Hispanic farm workers every year, and their families are devastated. He had, I, I was ultimately, I was a Paul Bear at his funeral in 1993. He had two issues in the last decade of his life. One was pesticides, the other was border security. We love that security. He understood that illegal migrants coming across were hurting working people in this country. And that, and that it was more difficult for him to bargain for good wages and conditions for Thank you. American workers if there was willy-nilly people coming across without any kind of screening. We need workers in this country. We need to bring them from abroad. But we should do that the legal way. policies and not allow the Sinaloa drug cartel to dictate Americans Truth. immigration policies. This migration is destroying our country. Number one, it's turned every American city into a border town. We are seeing in New York 110,000 migrants on the street. People who are, who are predatory workers, uh, employers are coming in and paying them six to ten dollars an hour, and they're bidding against union shops. And, uh, and the, the social safety net is being crushed in places like Detroit. People who need money here can't get it because the money is going to, 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 to undocumented immigrants. Mm -hmm. uh, something really happened. Interesting happened this week when the same time that Vice President Harris went to the border, ICE, the Immigration Service, announced that 425,000 convicted criminals had been allowed in over the last three and a half years. That they had arrested, that they had, that they had picked up at the border, screened them knew of their criminal records, and then put them on planes to any destination in this country. I think 18,000 murderers were among them, something like 20,000 rapists, and two or 3,000 people who were facing charges in their own countries for serious crimes, and those people, instead of taking care of them in their own countries, those countries said, hey, isn't it better to just get rid of this problem by sending them to the United States? How many of you think that it's a good idea to let, let one murderer into this country? Hell no! Or one rapist? No. Now, I want, and by the way, that number only comes from countries that report to ICE, that disclose who they are to ICE. There's many countries that don't make those disclosures. Venezuela, for example. So no, no Venezuelan criminals were reported. Russia, China, many, many others. It may well be over a million criminals that we've let in. Now, I'm saying this, one, because of the outrage and indignation that we should all feel for this incompetence. It, it goes beyond incompetence, it's malice. True. But more importantly, or equally importantly, President Trump for a year has been saying that this was happening. And, he, and CNN and MSNBC and ABC and NBC and the New York Times and the Washington Post have all said he's a racist, he's a conspiracy theorist, this is wild stuff, it is not happening. You forgot about That's CNN. That's what they told us. CNN, sorry. I'm so you. happy you're here. <laughs> I'm not Jesse Rose. You can come and see Tulsi and me afterward because we want you to come visit the transitional <laughs> office. We want to get you to come to us. I love you, Tulsi. Maybe, maybe as press secretary for the new administration, we need something like that. Yeah, go. Anyway. This should be an eye opener for everybody. And you know, CNN has not reported this. None of the networks have reported it. They're lying to the American public. We're continuing to lie. And that's something that should outrage every American, Democratic, or Republican. We're coming to the end of our program tonight, but I, if you don't mind, I'd just love to, to say a few things as we do. Um, 
when I when I came out and I said I was endorsing President Trump through my endorsement of Tulsi and Bobby, the uh, messages that I've received, the amounts of. By the way, I will say I will say of the, my followers on social media, ninety uh, percent have actually been quite lovely and supportive, and I've really appreciated that. <laughs> We don't agree with President Trump, but they are at least are civil enough to recognize that these are conversations that we should have, and not just shouting matches and not just hating on people. Yes. But I will say though that you know within my industry, as you can probably imagine, Hollywood is a very, very liberal town, and this very well could constitute career suicide. So I'm glad I did it with you guys. <laughs> but, but the thing I wanted to say, and this is to, to Bobby's point. We are, and you all know this, we, we are being inundated every single day with poison. Not just in the foods that we're eating and not just in the pharmaceuticals that are being shut down our throats. In the images that we are looking at, True. the audio that we are hearing through our media, Propaganda. We're poisoned and lied to. And, 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 and hear, hear me, we're all being poisoned and lied to. True. So as we go to the polls, as you guys and your passion and your fervor and wanting to get Donald Trump reelected and recognizing that that is the thing that we need to do, recognize that all of the people on the other side that still believe that Kamala is the answer, they're not, it's, she's, she's not, she's not, she's not, but they are being lied to. They are not the enemy, True. they are not evil. They are as evil at the top of that food chain. But the American people that believe that Kamala is the way. They are not evil people. They have been lied to and they have they have eaten that lie and it is it is in them. So to the best that we can do, may we may we practice grace, may we practice forgiveness, but may we practice patience. So that as we go to the polls, as we talk to our friends and our family, we encourage people to go and look. Do not be baited into their attacks. Do not go and be what they want you to be. Instead, hold your ground True. in dignity and integrity and in love and say, hey, I understand that you might feel this way. Let's have a conversation. And if you're unwilling to have a conversation, then we don't have to have a conversation. But don't get baited into their hate because that's what True. they want you to that's do. That's what they want. That will not help us get to it. Right?